where they go, Scooby Doo, we do it, we do it, we do it, and that's how we came up with that name. It's also in, I think it's the song of Rock Club, Diane. Diane, oh, Diane Denise. 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 You had probably people out there saying, you give us the next Scooby-Doo. Uh, tell us about the decision to start working other places besides Hanna-Barbera. <coughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> well, I'd say one thing that Fred liked us so much, he became our agent. So, <laughs> he was responsible for a lot of uh, help and the you know, movement of our careers. And uh, he, uh, he, uh, we, we were at Hanna Barbera, and I forget what happened. Our contract was expiring, and uh, we had we wanted to, we wanted to move up a little bit. I mean, we wanted to become associate producers as well, or something like that, because we were doing all that work anyway. And uh, you know, it was tough to get it was tough to get uh, something through. Uh, you know, movement over the series. So anyway, to so make a long story short. Uh, the, our real agent, Sandy Warnick, he, uh, uh, it was from IFA at the time, uh, he got us a job over at, uh, as associate producers and, and the story editors for the show over at the Patty Freedom. So we were there at the Patty Freedom for a couple of years, and maybe one or two, and then Fred wanted us over at uh, ABC, um, at C, C, yeah. CBS, yeah. He's been in all four. Network. So he wanted us at CB, uh, CBS working on the, for him on the Saturday morning shows and, and being the West Coast representatives. And we took all the pictures and things on the West Coast. And uh, so he got us out of our contract with uh, the Patty. And uh, so that was our next meeting. So we were there for a while. And, and, uh, and, and then here's the way Fred, Fred operated. He was a he was a dynamo. So what he, so what he, there was a, there was a Planet of the Apes, the live action Planet of the Apes over at 20th Century Fox, and so Fred called us in. There was some dispute in, internally about how the how the show should go action wise versus you know drama, and, and so Fred called us in unknown in, into this group and we were in this big room. I come first. First of all, he said I want you guys to read some scripts. That was the first thing. And he sent over 17 one-hour Planet of the Apes scripts. And he wanted to have a meeting the next day. All <laughs> over the scripts. Okay. So we split them up and we read them all. And we walk into this meeting at CBS, <coughs> the most grimaced looking bunch of people. It's like a trial of Nuremberg or something. <laughs> These all these we had no idea who they were. Why, you know, who are we even talking about? And what he did is, yeah, what he says, he throws this, as he says, uh, percentages, he went on percentages. He says, in Planet of the Apes, he says, what would be your percentage of action versus your percentage of, of drama? Drama, yeah, okay. And we sat there and we took a while, I guess. We said 75% action, 25% drama. And he goes like this. That's it. That's what I said. 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 We're just going out to the forbidden zone. Where's all this stuff? You know, we want to do that's the kind of things we want to do. They get attention for next year. We'll do that next year. If it's, uh, you don't do it this year. There ain't going to be a next year. It was, wasn't the next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is what happened. These, Fred, you know, like we say, we were the West Coast uh, anime, you know, on Saturday morning out here for him. And he says, I want you to take, I want you to go over to Fox to be in charge of Planet of the Apes. As well. So he says, What? <laughs> you know, hard enough doing one job, but anyways, he wanted us over there and he put us over there <coughs> as story editors. 
and uh, on the show. And that, that, that I, we used to work at Fox as music editors. So now we're coming back and we're in charge of the, 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 the scripts over at Planet of the Apes. And they have a big meeting, and Herb Hirschman was the exec producer on the, on the show. And they, and they brought in all of their guns, and they sat there and they, they wanted to get rid of us. He gave us a CBS guy to be our, cover our backs over there. And at the same time, he was working undercover for them to make sure that it was kind of a... Yeah, I don't want to get into the politics. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so we went under there at certain handicaps. And I'll just give you a little bit about this because it was kind of funny. Uh, we go in there, and this is when Ken was talking about a boy gets in an argument with his father and runs away from home. And uh, and he had the whole crew in there, Stan Huff and, and, and uh, did. Dimsdale, Howard Dimsdale, who, who was the story editor, and, uh, and so they made him the exec story editor, because Fred made us the story editor. And we're all sitting in there, and they're having it hurt, and they're trying to say, all right, well, let's, let's, now let's get an outline for the story. So everybody's sitting there, it's the worst way to do it, with, this is it, so we knew what was happening. And they said, what do you want to do with it? So they put us on the spot to do this, and say that. And so we said, no, I think the guy should be doing this or that. And you look at it, none of us like this story. You kid him, he didn't like that, what it was, because like we say, it, was, it wasn't a story. Uh, anyway, to put, make a long story short, they put us at, at the other end of the studio, got us away from everybody, but they put us in this old room that used to be a dressing room next to the, to the cafeteria. I had a friend there who was the second in command. I had a friend over there who was the second in command of, uh, of, the, uh, of the studio facilities and everything. This place, he turned it into a castle. And then when they came over and they saw us, they fell on they they, they went nuts and they brought us back over to the writers' building. <laughs> No, anyway, anyway, the long story short, that's it. We, uh, but, uh, we were there for the whole season, and, and we had some other stories, but uh, it goes on and on and on and on. That's, that's you know, so you God, I wish our careers were shorter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's jump I mean, in. What did uh, uh, Gary Nardino uh, say to us? He says, where are you guys working this week? <laughs> yeah. And what are he is today. Uh, the, let, let's step ahead here. You started your own studio. You worked, you worked at the only company called Film Ways to, to back you. you did, the first thing you did was an ABC Weekend special called The Puppy Who Wanted a Boy. Hmm. And they gave you, you sold them Fang Face, was your first series for them. And then all of a sudden everything exploded. All of a sudden you were doing Plastic Man and Mighty Man and Yuck and uh, Rickety Rocket. I worked, I worked on a show called, anybody remember Rickety Rocket? Yeah, I you know, was on for four minutes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, you were suddenly doing uh, Dingbat McCreep, Steve Cliff, uh, uh, and a lot of the ABC Weekend specials. Uh, let's talk about that period there. You were, there was a period there where you were selling in more shows on Hanna-Barbera. How, how did your relationship with Hanna-Barbera go at that point? Uh, the most significant thing, Bill Hanna was, I was very close to Bill Hanna. In fact, he was the one who gave me my first job. And because uh, I was friends with his son, and, and I used to spend weekends at Bill's place. I had no idea what Bill did. I had none. He was just a friend of mine. <laughs> friend of mine. Father. Anyways, um, so we got real busy, real fast. Incredible amount of work uh, for ABC. Uh, and I got a phone call from Bill Hammond. And he says, Kenny, you steal one more of ours. <laughs> People and I will crush you. <laughs> uh, we hired, obviously, we grew up in Hanover, we knew the system, we knew all the artists, we knew everybody, and, and personally, we liked the look of Hanover, and that's how we kind of mimicked what they did, you know, which I better than that. Uh, that's, that's where we, we were. Uh, we, we actually did. Uh, one of the years, I forget which year it was, we outsold the Hanna Barbera. We had the most shows up here, and we had a, a really a smallish crew to try to get all this stuff done. So 
mirroring one of the culprits, even though they're there, <laughs> to, uh, to everywhere we can find a place to get animation. There weren't enough people in town. Each of you tell me one favorite show you had that Ruby Spears produced for Saturday morning television. Stu your studio produced. Our studio? Yes, your, your studio produced. Fun dog. No, I, I, I agree, Joe. I think Thunder was, was uh, way ahead of its time and uh, great stories and uh, had good ratings and, and uh, we're very proud of that. And Thunder would have been on a lot longer except for a deal that Gary Marshall made with ABC. Put a Happy Days cartoon show on and a Bernard Shirley cartoon show and a Morgan mm -hmm. Mindy show, which you guys ended up doing the Morgan Mindy show yeah. there, essentially. But, all of a sudden, Thundar had to be had to be taken off to make room for the Happy Days show, which got lower ratings than Thundar did. Yeah, unfortunately, we were victims of those wonderful days of uh, Saturday morning when we had all program practices who uh, objected to any kind of uh, violence or threat of violence or inferred violence or <laughs> anything that was kind of you know a slap on the fingers, and uh, so. The only thing you do is build comedy, and even there, they objected to anything that was too, quote, violent for you know, comedy. In fact, one of the funniest things was, I can't remember, I don't know if it was Slender or the, or the, no, it was uh, Hercules. Hercules, we have our kid, I can't remember his name, right here. our kid, he was up on a rock, and, and it was like, uh, Huge animal is closing in on him, and he looks over and it's a 70, 80 foot drop off to the side. And the choice is going to be what's going to happen. Is this creature going to get him? Is he going to go over the side? And we said, okay, what happens is he, the last time he jumps down because of the athletic ability, he, he, he gets out of it. We're seeing this thing happening, and we fade off to commercial. The <laughs> came in and said, you can't do that. Why not? Uh, because you're going to have to make the clip lower. Hmm. He said, uh, it's too, too uh, frightening for the children. <laughs> he said, how high do you want to make it? And he said, make it eight feet. We <laughs> 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 said, we said, that's not very exciting, is it? <laughs> so that's what we were faced with. So, anyways, that affected all of them the Saturday morning. Friday. That was a tough, they were tough years for a while, but uh, they finally had to submit due to competition. Uh, but they go, you had to learn to talk illogically. Uh, if you were illogic, you had a shot at getting what you wanted. And uh, what they did is there was one, uh, it was Dragons here, and we have, and this is in the day of the the guys had spears, knights, you know, these things. And, you know, it's a comedy, and you're all familiar, I guess, with the game and, and uh, Dragon's Lair and all that. So they held up one of the shows that they wouldn't approve it. I said, I said why? She, well, we don't like this. The spears to have points on. <laughs> so I said, what do you, what am I, what do you do? What do you, do you should put marshmallows on. Uh, I swear. Well, this show was held up. Uh, I forgot for a week or so. It just sat there because I couldn't get it past marshmallows. And uh, they said, well, put a round ball. But you can't make a show work if you're going to not have points on the ends of the spears. You can have a butterfly in there, you can have whatever else, but you can't have a point. So that was, these, they, went to, they went to some very extreme things. I'll give you an example of it, just one quick one. So of the, the logic, the part of the logic, but it was the same thing that Kenny was talking about, the dropping off the end of the cliff. And we had in the front of no, it wasn't Thunder, I'm sorry, it was Josie and the Josie. Josie the Pussy Gas. No, no, no. Josie in Outer Space. No, we didn't do it. Oh, it's Josie. No, no, no. You know, the girl. Goldie Gold, Goldie Gold, Goldie Gold. 
they were caught in a, in, in a under, uh, underwater, uh, underground, I should say, where, where some, uh, it was an old Greek type place where they crashed in, and there was like a Greek pool, you know, a big pool, it wasn't like a swimming, but it was a huge pool, and it was water, and these uh, giant uh, uh, fish with teeth were coming after them, and uh, they swam to the end of the thing, and they couldn't get out in time, and these things were closing in like this, and then they got out. But the point is, they said, you can't do that. I said, why? He says, well, it's, it's going to scare everybody. It's going to scare the kids. So, anyway, I went around on my father and said, what if, what if we put one of these pillars in the, in the way? And she, and she said, OK, because it would take longer to get to the people that die. So, <laughs> What do you guys work on these days? What do you got come up? What do you got recently that you've been doing that you're happy with? Well, I mean, talk to the microphone, not to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, some stuff we can't really talk about. There's two things we have confidential con uh, confidential contracts. So, uh, one of them should be pretty big for this. Uh, then we got we're, we're working with the, with Marty Crawford, we're partnered with him on a movie that we're trying to sell, and. Uh, Seems to be getting some interest uh, in the, in the uh, he's from the agents. Uh, so basically, in the movies, we're, we're trying to do movies now because it's uh, because of the boom and, and the kind of stuff that we did on Saturday morning is now full length features and they're really doing well. And with they and especially with all the, the, the new technology they got, they make it look really terrific. So anyway, uh, we've had interest in some of our shows, but we don't own them anymore, the, the Warner Brothers and Thundari and, uh, and the Centurions and stuff. We've had producers and studios want us to get the rights to it to make a movie, but uh, we don't have the rights. So, uh, anyway. Anybody's out there that want to buy a show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have a whole lot of years of developed stuff, really great stuff that we've done by some of the other guys that work for us. Uh, you know, Doug Wiley and Gil Kane. Who else we had? It was we had Jack Kirby and, uh, and so forth. And so we're, we're, we're trying to develop a lot of those shows and make them into you know, attractive live action packages and so forth. And we think that there's, there's a lot of good stuff there. And that's just the live, you know, superhero kind of things. And plus, there's a lot of uh, comedy stuff too. You can follow the range of you know, Rango and, and some of the other stuff that has been done. Uh, for the kids as well. Uh, so we're working hard to try to get some new stuff. So. It goes slower now than it did in those days when, we were in the, when, the, when the networks just gobbled up. <coughs> they had a lot of shows and there wasn't that many producers and they weren't doing it themselves, which they're doing now. I kind of put most of the independents out of business because the, uh, the, 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 the networks and the studios now go uh, a monopoly. The, the networks can own the studios, and the studios can own the networks. And so they stop buying shows that they didn't own, and they everything that belongs to them. So that kind of knocked, knocked everybody out of the box. Uh, so that so so we have to go into other areas, of, which we have spread. And movies is one of them that, that you keep knocking at the door. And you know we got one movie you saw there. It wasn't you know it wasn't a big movie, but it was made for Dino De Laurentiis and. And, uh, the bar company actually produced the whole thing. And uh, at our studio, we call it, we didn't call it Ruby Spears, uh, because we didn't have children and stuff. And, uh, and I, I was concerned about saying Ruby Spears, so we call it, you know, trans <laughs> Oh, okay. But that's <laughs> stuff. Let's take one or two questions here. We got a few more minutes. Yeah, over okay, here, sir. Yeah, so, yeah, is there a show that you've done that you regret doing, or an episode of a show that you regret doing? A show you regret doing. I wish you would regret the rap. Yes. So the only one that, that everybody regrets, that was, uh, you know, the, 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 Oh, yeah, right. That was a regret. That was, uh, you know. Did you all put that on the We forgot it, you know. <laughs> 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 
Rick A. Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> Rodney. Which offended most people in the black community. Uh, we wouldn't figure it from anybody. Everybody's not funny, but. They're running them on a boomerang now. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think one person came down and complained to CBS and so they called some. So I take it off the air. You know, that was the end of the show. Well, what, what happened is that we were very careful on the show. Everybody, the voice, the voice directors and the, the, the program practices, they, you know, they, they were all African Americans. And we wanted, we told them, you, got, you guys are running for me. We don't want you. To, to, to make this thing, you know, make sure we're protected and you're protected and everything. The problem of, the big problem, again, stems from program practices. We, should, we sold the show, Ricky Rocket, and, and it wasn't the, the, the all package of the garbage. You want to hear No, no, thank you. Okay, it wasn't an act. So, no. All right, so. <laughs> It was written for, for just comedy for anybody. It was based, uh, the, the, it was like Abbott and Costello, and then we had a bunch of uh, dumb characters in the thing. And the problem with this is the minute you changed it to all Afri African Americans, it took a different it took a different turn on it because you, it, and the people were saying, uh, well, you're you know you're making fun of people and you should and and, and the show had already. That in production started production, we had to start production. But the program practices told us we had to do it, so we had no choice in it. And uh, we'd sold the show, we'd started production, so the, the, the basis for it and it was the script. And then they did the voice, the voice, uh, if any of you have seen it, they did the voice recording, they were the directors on the voices. And uh, Al Fan, I believe, was the director, and he. He's going he's, anyway, the studio come running in when they heard the soundtrack. Everyone in the studio, they didn't want to see what this was all about. And we knew, and one of them, Phyllis Tucker was over at the NBC at the time, and she came in with Winifred Wright, I don't know if you've known them, they were both African Americans, good friends, and they did a lot for us. And they came in and they saw a, a drawing of the rig of it, and they had bumpers all around, you know, the bumpers that was, well, somebody else overseas got the hold of this, and they they walked brought the, the, the bumpers and and Phyllis looks at me and says, "What is that?" And I said, "I don't know. <laughs> That's not what the thing looks like." So I'm just trying to say that this wasn't, like Ken said, done by design from our company. It was uh, due to you know certain things beyond our control. <laughs> I don't know if I know those. <laughs> uh, we got have one more question. Yes, sir. So what kind of dog was Scooby? Pardon? What kind of dog was Scooby? Mm -hmm. Scooby? Scooby? Scooby. 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 Is he? Yes, he yeah. is. Yes. He's, uh, you know, we said, where we, we described him as a goofy looking great thing, you know. Uh, and of course, you know, the way he talked and what he did was his personality. That was fun and like. And uh, so that's, that's what he ended up being. That was a great contribution. His yeah. voice, the way he did the you know, stuff. Well, we wrote the scripts for the duck. For the duck, the, the, the script said, "Roddy Wright." You know. <laughs> 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 well, we need we need to. We, 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 I wish we had another hour or so here. We need to, to, to stop here, but we want to get these guys back to another convention and continue this in one of these days. Would you join me in thanking for coming out here on a movie?